people always ask, well, how much more does it cost? And of course, that is a very difficult question to answer because I would love to just give everyone a straight answer. Right. Here's the simplest way to put it, though. If you're already in kind of the higher end construction, and I don't mean like super high end, like, you know, ridiculous custom houses. I just mean higher end construction, um, which would be in some of these new urban neighborhoods. Or uh, I don't know an example where you guys are necessarily. But here, if you're in a nice neighborhood building houses, you know, this ma these masonry houses are going to be 20 to 30 percent more. So that's that's a lot more, but it's not a crazy amount more. And because we design everything in house too, like I taught myself design while I was working for Clay. And so we're a true design build. And, and the reason I bring that up is everything is so thoughtful that usually people walk into our houses and think it's a good bit bigger than it is. Now they don't think it's twice the size that it actually is, right? But if it's a 2000 square foot house, they're like, oh, I really thought this was like 2,400 square feet because mm -hmm. we're making use of every little space. Um, and, and that idea too of, and some of this is figuring out how to shape the narrative um, with, with people because you can actually make, I guess you could say like luxury accessible if you put it in a smaller footprint. And I say luxury, I don't really like the word luxury. I use it more as kind of a, you know, for, from a client perspective um, because everything is luxury at this point. You know what I mean? You drive yeah. by some crappy suburb and neighborhood with, you know, Pinewood Creek and there's no pines and there's no Creek and there's no luxury estates either. But, uh, <laughs> um, but when, when it comes to cheaper building, right, then we're way more expensive because the cost of the brick is the same as it would be on the expensive house. But then the finishes inside are much less if you're using vinyl floors or vinyl windows or whatever it is. Well, then your masonry proportionally becomes much higher. So it could be double the cost or something like that. Um, and so, the context of where I think this is very applicable is no, it's not to build the whole, all the, the, the country's single family detached houses in suburban neighborhoods, but it is to build attached and townhouses in downtown areas because one, you solve flooding issues, you solve fire issues, you solve sound issues with the masonry, right? You're not worried about fire and stuff like that in the same way. Um, whenever you're building attached, you just have a, a shared party wall and you don't have windows inside and those windows are very expensive just masonry wise all these openings so that's what we're doing in this project where it actually makes the i'm not saying it's not expensive but it makes the the masonry more accessible and of course when you're building in rectangles people don't think about this but if you the the larger the rectangle it is the more cost effective it is because if you've got i know no one's going to build a 10 foot by 100 foot building but say someone is building a 10 foot by 100 foot building that's a thousand square feet if you just make it one foot wider 11 feet you know, by, by a hundred feet, you've added a hundred square feet by just adding one foot of wall or two feet of wall, if you think about both sides. Mm -hmm. And so there's a power in, in, in scale, you could say on larger commercial buildings, but we're just now getting to explore that because another reason it's so expensive is we've been innovating on stick framing for almost 200 years. Now, all of the industry and vendors and subs and contractors and inspectors and banks and everything is focused on that. I'm having to order stuff from out of Canada in the UK and Ohio and brick over here just to be able to build a house. Over time, we want to vertically integrate more um, and, and get some powers of, of scale out of that. And I think it'll bring the cost down, but it's not just about bringing the cost down. It's actually educating people about what are you paying for? What are you buying? Mm -hmm. And things like that. Well, I think, I mean, this is what attracts me to like CLT buildings and even concrete buildings where, you know, we're, we're doing a CLT project right now, it's in design. And, you know, the first thing that comes up is like, well, what's the cost difference than traditionally framed? I'm yep. like, that that's, it's not an apples to apples comparison, because we're talking about leaving the CLT exposed on the inside. Yep. So a CLT wall system is effectively replacing my framing, my insulation, my drywall, my, my paint, and my yep. trim and, and all my interior trim. It's like, so if I package all those up and then, and then say, here's my CLT cost, it, it, there's a, there's a fair chance that it might be less expensive to build CLT. But if yep. I'm building a CLT wall and I'm then adding, you know, drywall and plaster on the inside and painting it and adding trim, it's like, okay, well now we're, now we're not. And it's yep. similar to like the, the masonry walls where, you know, a lot of your homes I've seen on your website, you have exposed masonry on the inside. Yep. If I said, Hey, I want all that strapped and plastered and painted, 
you know, it's an enormous cost and it's almost, it's almost one of those things where it's like, it's wasteful. Yep. Where it's like, you're, you're, you're actually covering up the part, like a, a huge part of the beauty of these, you know, of these homes. And that's the thing. It's, you know, when you create something that's beautiful, that is compelling in and of itself. And, and that's what I love about masonry. You know, like a brick is the size it is to fit the human hand. And then when you've got this house that's been sculpted out of 60,000, 100,000 brick, you know, laid each one laid by hand, you get you get a story out of the walls. Right. You know, they feel human. Um, <clears throat> and I'm a big fan of drywall, by the way. We on our partition walls inside because we build our envelope walls out of masonry. I, when I say envelope, I mean essentially all your exterior walls sure. out of out of masonry and then anything inside for dividing off rooms and things like that we do out of two by fours or two by sixes in drywall and people sometimes ask me why why don't you do all masonry inside and it's like well masonry would be more expensive for one but that's actually not the main reason it's if you want to build something to last for centuries you want the shell you want the envelope to be durable for centuries but then you want the interior to be adaptable for centuries mm -hmm. and so Two by fours and drywall is an amazing material. It's 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 fast. It it does what it's supposed to do well when it's mm -hmm. used in the right context. Um, so we really it's not about just for us about going to this old way of building. It's how do we blend the best of old and new? Um, and because sorry, finish finish your thought. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. there it goes. Can you go again? Yeah, I I was just gonna say finish your thought. I interrupted you some. Oh, no, go ahead. So that was the question that I had um, and I've been holding on to for a little bit is with respect to your methods are very traditional for building the envelope of the house. But like how closely are you building to methods that were used a couple hundred years ago? Like as far as the way you're tying in windows, obviously a couple hundred years ago, they didn't have electrical. So electrical and utilities and exterior walls, like how much are you borrowing from traditional methods and how much are you having to integrate new? That's a good question. Um, boy, we, we're always innovating. Like every build, we're trying something new. And I will definitely say I've gotten better at this, you know, figuring out little tips and tricks. And I used to have lots of conduit on, on walls, yeah. you know, if you're running, um, now, granted, you've got partition walls inside where you can put a lot of things, but on the downstairs, you're in a pretty small house. It's mainly just brick walls. And so we'd have, have, um, uh, conduit, but now with all these wireless switches, mm. we can, we put floor plugs in to take care of that. So then the walls don't get, you know, full of conduit. And then we can put our little Pico switches, you know, wireless switches everywhere. And you get this really clean look. And now we're putting, if we've got a TV, you know, going on a brick wall, we'll run a, um, during the masonry, we'll just have the masons run a little smurf tube, um, that we can, the electrician can feed through later. And so it's really about thinking ahead. Um, and that's why I'm saying we've gotten better at it, but there's all sorts of things because, you know, now that we're, we're insulating things too. And, but you have to be careful when you're insulating a mass wall building because a mass wall building really works quite differently than a conventional stick frame building. And that, I mean, brick, it's a porous material. If you drop it in water and take it out, it's going to weigh more than when, when it was, before you dropped it in because it's going to have absorbed water when you've got your entire wall system out of a foot thick of brick or more you know your wall system is really it's shedding a lot of water when and when it's raining really hard the vast majority of water gets shed but that masonry is still absorbing water and distributing it throughout the wall system and is breathing from both sides you could say like vapor mm -hmm. water vapor is moving in and out and the mistake a lot of people make is they'll paint a brick building with a latex or oil-based paint and then that traps moisture because water will get in the building and then it can't get out and that's where you get problems. But that's why we use, if we're painting buildings, we use lime wash or potassium silicate because it's got a high perm rating and is breathable. Um, so what? we're innovating all the time, but we're also looking back all the time. And I'm always looking, like I'm going to a structural masonry workshop in Spain actually mm -hmm. later this year, all these Italian professors that are talking about vaulting and flying buttresses and things that I'm so excited about because we've completely forgotten how to do these things. Mm -hmm.